Hello and welcome to this short video about our SET2 room temperature controller. Today I'm going to show you how to read the display, how to set the room temperature, the airflow and the heating or cooling operation. I'm also going to show you how to set the clock and use the timer. When the SET2 is off the display shows you only the current time and the current room temperature. When you turn it on by pressing the standby button, the backlight turns on, the system turns on and the display additionally shows you what the air conditioner is doing. It also shows you how the fan is operating and a few other indications. On the right hand side below the fan indication you'll see what looks like a petrol pump. When this is illuminated it indicates that the compressor is running. Should the system have two compressors then two of these pumps may be displayed. Here you can see that the current actual room temperature is displayed, but by pressing the plus or minus buttons, the current set point temperature will appear. Use the same plus or minus buttons to increase or decrease the set point to meet your desired comfort level. Now let's see what we find when we drop the front flap. This exposes a number of other buttons that we can use in setting up the controller. It does say here, to read the user manual before use, which is a really good idea. Although I will cover a fair amount of this in this video. It does also say that some of these buttons you see here may not be applicable in your installation. There are four modes of operation. These can be selected by using the mode button. When you first press the button, the current operating mode will appear. Press the mode button repeatedly to scroll through the available modes. Cooling only, fan only, heating only, or auto mode. The auto setting allows the unit to run on both cooling and heating either side of the set point. And in this mode, it also indicates whether it is cooling or heating. The display has backlight colors to help you to recognize the operating mode. Blue for cooling, yellow for fan only, reddish orange for heating, and light violet for auto. The backlight will turn to red if there is a fault with the system, returning to its original mode color once that fault is cleared. We'll come back to faults later. If the system is on, the backlight stays on for about 30 seconds after the last button press. But if the system is off, only for 10 seconds. There are four options of fan speed that can be selected. Use the fan button to select between auto, high, medium or low fan speeds. If high, medium or low are selected, the fan will only run at that speed selected. Selecting auto, however, allows the controller to select the most suitable fan speed to maintain the set temperature. The closer to the set temperature, the lower the fan speed. Let's just suppose now the system is off under the control of the timer and you need to run the system after hours. There is a bypass function to have the system come on for a fixed period. Press and hold the plus button for three seconds and the letter H appears on the display. By pressing the plus button repeatedly, you can choose one hour, two hours or four hours of operation. Keep pressing and you will see that it goes around the loop again. Let's choose one hour. If you wish to terminate this before the time has run out, just use the on off button to turn the system off. If your system has zones installed with dampers, then there are zone buttons that allow these zones to be turned on and off. Zone 1 is the master zone and can only be turned off providing the two other zones are turned on. There is a sleep button that can be used, usually at night, that once pressed saves energy by altering the set point temperature slowly over two hours. In summer the temperature will be raised by two degrees and in winter lowered by three degrees. This function isn't available in the fan only mode of course. There is a swing button that should your indoor unit be of an under ceiling or wall mount type with discharge louvers then this button will activate the louver sweep function or it could also be used to set the louvers in a specific direction. 
If you want to stop people tampering with the settings, then you can apply the key lock function. This is activated by holding down the time plus and mode buttons together for three seconds. And you will see a key displayed indicating the controller is locked. Use the same buttons to unlock. So that's the time plus and mode buttons together. Once locked, only the on-off button and the after-hours bypass function previously mentioned can be operated. Now let's have a look to see how we set the clock. Press the time plus or minus buttons to increase or decrease the time in one minute intervals. Hold either of these buttons down to change at a faster rate, but be prepared as after only a few minutes it will jump to changing the hours instead of the minutes. Once set, leave it alone for just a few seconds and settings will automatically be saved. Use the day button to scroll through the days and set as desired. Now let's have a look at programming the timer. The timer can be set for two periods of operation individually for each day of the week. Press the timer button and the set to changes to the timer setting mode with the time digits flashing. At any time during timer setting, if no button is pressed for a few seconds, the current changes will be saved and the set to will drop out of the timer setting mode. Select the day of the week to program by pressing the day button to scroll through. To set the on time, use the time plus or minus buttons to increase or decrease the time in one minute intervals. Hold either of these buttons down to change at a faster rate, but be prepared, as mentioned previously, after a few minutes it will jump to changing the hours instead of the minutes. Once the on time is set, Use the timer button to select the off time and as before use the time plus or minus buttons to increase or decrease the time setting. Repeated pressing of the timer button will select between the on and off timer settings. Once you have set the on and off times for period 1, if you want to set times for period 2, use the main plus and minus buttons. These buttons will move you back and forth between periods 1 and 2 which appear on the display as P1 and P2. Once the first day is set, now you can progress to the next day by pressing the day button. Repeat this procedure until all the days required to be set have been set. Make a mistake, press cancel at any time. Hold the cancel button down for five seconds and all the timer settings will be cancelled and cleared. When the unit is running under the control of the timer, the display will show the next event that is to happen, so if it is on, it will be displaying off. There are something like 24 possible error messages, and these would appear at the display on the bottom right hand corner. It's not practical here to go through all of these, but there is a support document on our website www.temperzone.biz that gives a lot of extra background information including all the error messages, troubleshooting and how to calibrate the sensor if the display is not reading the temperature correctly of course. The user manual also contains some simple troubleshooting information and instructions on how to use the remote control for some of the function setting. A couple of things also worth mentioning is that if there is a power cut the settings you have made will be retained with the battery backup and the system will restart with the last settings. If it was on when the power failed it will turn back on when the power is restored, providing the timer function has not changed during that off period. If the settings have not been retained, then it is an indication that the backup battery needs to be replaced. If the keypad will not respond, check to see if the key symbol is displayed, as the controller may need to be unlocked. If the system is not operating, then check that it is not off because of the timer settings. Thank you for watching.